what are you questing for? Dolphin. This is Dolphin Quest, underway. Far. This is Dolphin Quest underway. We're here, we're live, and I hope you can hear us. Somebody give a thumbs up in the chat room if you can, because we're outdoors without our normal inside microphone. Yes, we thought it would be uh, the compromise, more fun to show you what it's like here instead of just talking about it. So hopefully the sound's coming through okay. Um, uh, we won't know for a minute because there's a tape delay and stuff. Yes. So, but yes, we'll eventually see somebody pop up in that chat room and say, hey, we can hear you, but it looks like the sound level's good. So I think we're probably okay. Okay. Oh, cool. So where uh, are we? Well, first of all, who are we? Oh, who are we? Hey, I'm, I'm Chris. So oh, no. our names are down there. Cool. <laughs> I put them cool. in the right order this time. Cool. We got a thumbs up there, too. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Chris. And I'm Cherie. And uh, we are Techno Maddie. We've been online doing this thing for 15 years. Yeah, for you our, just know. celebrated your 15 year No anniversary on April oh my 1st uh, since he left his home. Uh, where he was previously stationed out in the San Francisco area. Station. Station. <laughs> Station. Lived. I guess, life, I guess yeah. that's what you call living. <laughs> and then uh, we met shortly thereafter. I was living here in Florida, which is where we have been riding out the pandemic uh, aboard our boat. But yes. uh, we have traveled by lots of different styles of RVs, <laughs> and we've had the boat for four years now. That's hard to believe as well. For, yeah, it, it, yeah, it seems like forever we've had the boat. But we've got, you know, we've done small RVs, big RVs. We got a vintage bus, which we still have out in Arizona. We've got a little camper van, which we've been using a lot um, over the past year, um, a Winnebago Travato, and our boat, which has been kind of our primary home when we're not in the van. So we, yes. we mix it up. Yeah. So we um, fell in love with the city of Sanford, which, if you take the St. John's River from 
Jacksonville, 140 miles <laughs> south, you get to Sanford, which is the northern end of Orlando. So it's about 40 miles inland, well protected from uh, hurricane tropical systems, as much as you can be in the southeast anyway. Mm -hmm. And we fell in love with it when we visited there a little uh -huh. over two years ago. We intended just to stay a week on our St. John's River cruise then. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we ended up there four months, five months, something mm -hmm. like that. Just and, and, fell in love with it. And speaking of Sanford, I see uh, Savina's in the chat, so she part of the reason we got hooked on Sanford. Right yeah, it's all her fault. <laughs> um, and yeah, we just loved it. It's a small historic town. It's a historic, no, it's a drinking town with a, a historic, historic problem. problem. Yes. Uh, lots of locally owned businesses, and art. All within walking distance of this amazing um, Monroe Harbor Marina right downtown. So it was a great, we thought we'd be there a week and it just went on and on. And then uh, when we returned to our boat after doing about eight months in the uh, RVs, we'd split it between van and boat uh, bus. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, and then the pandemic hit, uh, we went and got the boat out of storage where it was in Savannah. Yeah. And there was no question when Marina started shutting down and the world looked like it was we just unknown. Yeah, no idea what was going to happen. Um, there was no question in our mind where we wanted to return the place that had never called us like home before. <laughs> uh, so we returned to Sanford. We did the cruise down the St. John's in two days, uh, yeah. where we previously had taken like 10 to 15 days to do. Right. And so, yeah, the, so then we've been, the boat's been basically living in Sanford since March 2020, the end of March 2020. And, um, you know, we've taken the boat out and done little anchoring things, but we've never gone. I think our furthest was 12 miles away from the marina. We've, and we never stayed out more than three, maybe five nights at yeah. a time. Mm -hmm. So we decided, and we've been doing a lot of van trips lately. <laughs> we've actually been spending more time aboard the van in the last couple of months <laughs> than we have in the boat because, well, that's why I picked this wine. It has a bicycle on it. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we have our new electric bikes in. We have a video out on that we put out last week. Uh, so we've been getting out to a lot of the amazing Florida state parks and enjoying, yeah, we've been doing <laughs> a week or two at a time in the van going out to multiple parks and hitting the trail. So that's been a lot of fun. We decided it was time for a boat adventure. <laughs> yeah, so our boat has been craving a taste of salt water the engines need a need a good workout and more than just these little piddling trips so we decided we're going to go on a quest and to give it a purpose we called it dolphin quest because we're going to head down the river until we find dolphins which means pretty much going to jacksonville right so hopefully not too much further <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah uh, so because the st john's river is so long it eventually be it is actually fed down i think it starts down in um Way past but, Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, it's way down there. South, south. So it's it starts there and then flows northward. And so it's freshwater up until we're starting to get here where we yeah. are. We're around Palatka right now, if you look yeah. on a map. Yeah, we're floating in a beautiful series of islands. It's just gorgeous here. And this is a little bit tidal. I think the reason we're pushing that way right now is a slight incoming tide. Very small shift, but it's still mostly freshwater. We haven't gotten... Right. So we'll start to hit salt water. And dolphins, they tend to like salt water. They <laughs> have been known to come down this far south, even as far south as Sanford many years there ago. There was a sick lost dolphin found yeah. in Sanford in 2000. But they don't do well in the fresh water. Yes. The salt water helps protect them from diseases and things. So um, we haven't seen dolphins swimming around our boat in over a year. So mm -hmm. we really want to experience that again. We've had wonderful manatees, amazing alligators, lots of wildlife and birds. Uh, but... We miss no, dolphins. dolphins. It's a, and it's an excuse. You know, it's an excuse to get out in the boat for a longer trip, um, get caught up on all the engine maintenance, do all those boaty things. Because, well, you know, we, we you know, people might ask, like, why aren't we getting back on the Great Loop and heading north? It's like, this is, well, you can't even go to Canada. This is not a good year for doing the Great Loop. And so much stuff is still just peaking out and stuff. And, well, hurricane season's coming. So we're going to do this trip and then end up back in Sanford and... The boat will live there for a while longer before we head back out right. on the Right. Our, our general intentions at this time is uh, we'll continue to store the boat in Sanford for hurricane season through peak, probably through at least October. Uh, it's just the safest place we can be right now. We'll still enjoy probably doing trips up and down the St. John's like we are now. This mm -hmm. trip will probably be three weeks-ish. Yeah, we need to be weeks. back. Uh, Kiki actually has some stuff up, so we've got some medical appointments ah. for her. And we're <laughs> trying to get caught up on our medical We're more concerned about our cat's medical stuff than yeah. ours, though. So yeah, yeah, but you know, like everyone else during pan the pandemic, unless you had something life-threatening, you put... Uh, everything off but everything off so we're we're trying to get work our way into the medical system and get caught up on all of our annual stuff and routine maintenance yeah. so so yeah this is our big boat trip that might be our you know big trip far most of in, until maybe the end of uh, 2021 mm -hmm. before we get out to bigger boating trips but then we'll maybe do a big um 
uh, van trip all the way back out to our bus, which we miss. We haven't seen our bus in, since the pandemic started. Right. Yeah, so we don't know. We, we'll yes. probably do some RVing during hurricane season. We might go up north first. We're kind of contemplating um, it's cooler temperatures. <laughs> It'd be nice during the summer if we can find them. We've got mm-hmm. some friends who are spending time up north. Uh, the northeast maybe michigan who knows um and then work our way down to arizona towards the end of summer once their peak temperatures have dissipated some like thankfully where we keep our bus in benson arizona we own a co-op lot out there which you might know um it's at about elevation 3500 5000 so it doesn't get as hot there as the rest of arizona but it still gets hotter than i like but it's a it's a dry heat. it's a dry heat it does make a difference that dry heat you know it, you, at least you're not sweating as you smell your your flesh ben burning. Ben here. Hey, Ben's here. Yo, and we'll, we'll, we'll see, see you in a few you. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's yes. nice to finally feel safe to start to, to have more meetings with people. With friends and hugs. Not, yes. and hug them when yes. we oh, see I'm them. I'm so enjoying hugs. We got to hug on Sabina the other day. Oh, yes. so awesome. Uh, hey. Our friends there in Sanford. Um, and someone said, can't believe you haven't gone across to the Bahamas yet. And uh, we were actually gearing <laughs> up to go to the Bahamas last year before the pandemic. And we were about, we originally were thinking when. Maybe we'll ride it out in the Bahamas. This sounds like a great place, you know, deserted places. And then we had friends who were over there and oh. they got trapped there. Yeah, because the Bahamas, as the pandemic was start, as the lockdowns happened, they basically put down that you couldn't get off your boat except one day a week for a couple hours to meet a grocer at the dock for provisions you literally could not go ashore and you're sitting on your boat and you're not allowed to leave you can't go back to the u.s basically there was a period of just sit on your boat so we're really glad we didn't go to the bahamas right. last year yes our friends were sharing the problems they were starting to have yes. and we said no no let's look at sanford <laughs> instead um and now they're back to you can get back into the bahamas if you've uh, had vaccination or a recent covid test and we are vaccinated now yep. so we could go back over there but, but now it's, it's hurricane season it's hurricane season so, so, so we're it... kind of thinking if the world is still looking sane towards the end of the year yeah. maybe we get back to the boat in october get past hurricane season and, and then, the <laughs> then we spend winter over in the bahamas so that would be kind of cool before we leave the southeast area and hopefully by then canada starts to open back up and we can start looking at getting back on the great loop but you know we don't try to plan we're slow loopers and we try the worst thing you can have on a boat is a schedule and a plan so yeah and you know i think the lesson of 2020 for most of us is plans what are those (laughs) (laughs) yep (laughs) oh ben says they might be heading north next month and stay east so we might catch you up on the road then we can with your bus not with our bus yeah no but yeah our his bus our van we can get together you don't recognize ben wilmore uh he is the owner of the Creative Cruiser. We have a wonderful video tour. Well, the t- video tour is not so wonderful. Yeah. The bus is wonderful. The, the, the bus <laughs> is is probably the coolest RV that has ever existed because they took one of the most distinctive looking vintage buses and made it super modern under the hood, but super art deco stylish design, every nook and cranny and touch. So this is a work of art brought to life and it can cruise at 90 miles an hour, but it's straight, straight out of the sixties. So and, and Ben is responsible for us having a vintage bus as well, because he we gave got, us the bus bug. We, yeah, it's <laughs> contagious. So be very careful if you hang out with bus people. Um, but yeah, we were inspired when we were ready for a larger yeah. RV to go vintage bus as well. And, so that's and, how Zephyr came into and our ben, lives. Ben was one of the first other young working on the road nomads that we met period. We met him like what? 12, 13, 14 years ago. I don't know. Way back. 2008. Yeah. Way back when, when our, first our before there was escapers and all these wonderful communities that was we're just kind of bumping into each other and we're like oh my gosh another one yay yes so we are we really have no agenda other than to share with you this view i think there is a manatee over there, <laughs> there is a man- oh my gosh the camera yeah, swing the camera around it's swimming our way i oh, know it looks like i could see the wake it's swimming away from us but it's, so you might not see much but that little patch of water was a manatee going by usually underwater sometimes they surface right after. yeah man- manatees you know they don't jump out and do flips you know that's that's kind they of a do down sometimes, actually. <laughs> and yeah here's a little bit more of our view this is we, we cannot see another person another house every so often a boat putters by out on the main channel of the river way up over there so we love these kind of isolated anchorages they're they are all-time favorite let's bring this back down yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> it's just it's beautiful being on the water. It's you know, for our viewers, it's like you know being at those amazing boondocking spots where you get out there and there's nobody else around except desert sunsets and you know we you we love stuff like that. Off a little bit there. Okay, here no, I, I could take our names away too. I don't need to have I our names up underneath us. So it's actually a little bit hard for me to see the screen just because the sun the, the sun, sun is, is right, right back there the way us. so we're at anchor and the boat will swing either with mm -hmm. the wind or the current so we have very very light winds right now so we're mostly being influenced by the very slight current that we have because mm -hmm. we're starting to get into the tidal effects of the Atlantic Ocean yeah. here so mm -hmm. we haven't had tidal effects in <laughs> over a year on the boat so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so yeah, anyway, we have really have no agenda other than to share this with you. So if you have questions for us about boats, about RVs, about the St. John's, John's River cruising, we're happy to answer them. Our only request is if you have questions about mobile internet, That's say, our day job. say that for our day job, go over to our office at mobileinternetinfo.com. So wait, I should uh, put up the Q&A time here and we've got wine. So oh, yes, we, we have wine. Cheers. Drinking a Pinot Grigio, nothing special. I think we had this. It has screw top. It has screw top. We got it from all these this time. Yeah. So yeah, we'll start paying closer attention to the the chat window here. And uh, here's to you guys. Here's to you. It's, oh, I love the animal. Always with her. look each other in the eyes when you toast, or else it's seven years of bad sex, and you don't want that. Mm. All right. Oh, we have a question from Fairfax County Math. Fairfax County Math and Physics Tutor. Oh, thank, thankfully, it is not about math. <laughs> So, well, it kind of is about physics. So how do you keep Kiki safe on the boat, not falling off? I'm about to bring two cats <laughs> aboard, so planning. Okay, so we when we first moved aboard the boat, we made it one of our top priorities to find a cat life jacket. And well, I, we, dis, we determined and discovered, rediscovered that cats don't have bones. They're actually liquid and they could assume any shape. So we tried all these different life jackets and we, they have handles and you pick her up and she just like flows out the armhole. And it's like, so <laughs> yeah, we, we actually took her to uh, a West Marine to let her bring her in and <laughs> test her for several of theirs. We took her to a PetSmart, which also had life jackets for dogs and they Cat, claim cats. Claim cats. She tried on about five different models. We ordered in several. Every single Nothing. one of them, we picked them up. She has she no bones. Out of it's just like, yeah. So we figured it would be, it wouldn't be safe to assume that a life, putting her in a life jacket would save her if we needed to evacuate the boat or something. So we instead decided it was a lot safer for us to plan around not having a life jacket on her uh, in any rescue attempts that we have. Now, as far as keeping her safe on the boat during non-rescue times, oh, during rescue times, we do take her out regularly on the dinghy. So if we ever do need to do a, a quick evacuation, it's not a surprise to yeah, us. Yeah, she's, she, she's comfortable riding on the she dinghy. She is used to riding in the dinghy. She's used to boarding it with us. She's used to the sound of diesel engines and outboards and all that stuff. She's she's not phased at all. Uh, but as far as keeping her on the boat, when we first got on the boat, she was extremely curious. She was also four years younger. She's now 12 and a half and she's, you know, getting a little older. Um, but she was a lot more curious back then. And we had a lot of problems in the beginning with her when we'd be at dock. Um, that she'd find ways, she'd find, she'd be discovering ways on and off the boat and that we hadn't found yet. crannies that we didn't know about. <laughs> so, uh, we had to find all of those places that she couldn't hide on the boat was, that was a problem as well. Cause there was a lot of places she could hide. Uh, so we've got that all under control now and find all the ways she could get off the boat and block them. So we've got screens mm -hmm. on all the windows now, all the doors, uh, we uh, reprimand each other if we forget to close one of the door mm -hmm. screens. Um, and we, we don't let her outside unsupervised. When we are up here, she loves to be hanging out. She's she's sleeping right here at our feet right now, napped out. Um, so she doesn't get out too often. She's you know, we, I, if, if we were starting now, we'd get her uh, an Apple AirTag or something, a, a little locator thing, so we could find her. Because we've had to hunt for her, and she's been caught her on other people's boats back when she was first. She loves to explore other people's boats. She really RVs likes sailboats for some reason. Yes, she too. does. I think she was telling us she wanted a sailboat. <laughs> um, so we have had her uh, one time. We got to anchor. It was here on the St. John's River uh, about two years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was a different anchorage than this one. Uh, we set the anchor. Chris goes downstairs where we get into our work life. I think we had a story up or something. No, I think we were watching out. something because we were, we were curled up on the couch. No, we weren't. I was at my oh, desk. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I don't know. We went back to our work day. Yeah. And, um, we heard, we heard something go bump. We didn't actually even hear a splash. We just heard something like, oh, we thought a bird had hit the window of the boat. But that, whenever we hear anything strange, we always is like, where's the cat? Look for the cat. And, and sure enough, one of us yeah. had forgotten. To zip up the, the screen. And, um, and I ran up here and I saw a little cat head. 
disappearing down by the back of the boat, and I basically dove in after her. It's because we had just seen an eight foot alligator swimming around the and boat. And she had never you, swam before. Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we always wanted to give her swimming lessons, make sure that she could swim. Yeah, we we kept calling over. the YMCA, and they'd say no cats. Like, and everywhere that we had the boat, there were alligators, and I wasn't <laughs> going to put her into an immediate emergency situation uh, with alligators. So. Um, so yeah, so she it was, had it was very scary. So it was very scary. But I did discover she knows that she can swim very well and very fast. And so I'm swimming to catch her, telling her, Kiki, turn around, stop swimming. She's trying to swim a lap of the boat, find a way up, up top. I'm swimming after her. I Sharif's deployed, getting a paddleboard and trying to I rescue deployed, us both. I deployed the paddleboard and met them up at the front of the boat. And, and the alligators, boat. meanwhile, like, ooh, hey, what's going on ooh, over there? Lots of tasty treats. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we got everybody back ashore. We all panted and had an adrenaline come down and we had a talk heart to heart ever since that experience kiki has shown no interest in going near the edges of the boat uh what had (laughs) happened is if you show them up here um the front of she used to love love climbing over the front of the boat yeah with the windows where these uh things were unzipped she'd just crawl up on the top and then slide down the front windshield down to the front to look out the front and And then she'd walk around the side of the boat and come back and meet us on the cockpit and the bayliner does not have a side walkway it has just a tiny narrow little thing you know basically big enough for one shoe so it's it's actually probably a good size for a cat but it is not very big and, well, what, and no railing when, on the side. Uh, you're an anchor you have your <laughs> fender stowed and i had not left a gap underneath the fender mm-hmm. moving from the bow onto the side deck and she tried to climb over the that's fender, our best guess yeah and we think she fell over she tripped or she was she slid off the fender um mm-hmm. so one thing we always do is when we anchor now or when i take up the fenders after leaving dock is i make sure there's always easy access to the side deck in case she does get out to the front of the boat without us knowing it again so she has mm-hmm. easy access to get around yeah. so a lot of it comes down to knowing your boat knowing the places your cat can get in mm-hmm. and out and getting them used to it don't yeah. don't we have we always <laughs> learn because we can do a whole video on cats on boats we, yeah. well we've done one on yeah. rvs but yeah. uh, we just from a very very early age since she was seven weeks old when she joined us we uh just kept her introduced a lot of different experiences and we tried not to freak out even though we were freaking out whenever she would get out or get beyond our comfort zone uh so she keeps chill and calm we didn't want her running away or or feeling like we're upset with her or anything like that and that's really gone a long way she's she's actually usually pretty good yeah and yeah and yeah so we we, we're we're paranoid cat parents too so we're we're always keeping close eyes uh let's see Sandy's saying they're chilling along the Missouri River in Nebraska. Are you on a boat? Because that's about as far upstream as you can go, and cruising boats hardly ever go that far. So I'm assuming you're in an RV. But maybe. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. That'd be that'd be a quite a boating adventure to go all the way up to Nebraska uh, on a cruising boat. And okay. uh, did we domicile in Sanford? No, we're still legally domiciled in Green Cove Springs, which is right up the way here. We'll be visiting our hometown here yes. very soon. Uh, Green Coast Springs has a mail forwarding service, um, especially for cruisers and RVers, similar to what the Escapees offers. Um, and that's been our domicile for... Um, since 2013 is yeah. when we moved to Green Coast Springs. And we thought a couple times about, you know, in the last year since we've been there so long, you know, changing our driver's license or something over to Sanford. But we do intend to not have Sanford be our, our home base um, eventually. And actually, yeah, you know, I think at this point, Sanford uh-huh. is now where the boat is staying for hurricane season, and yeah. we're no longer going to be home based in Sanford for yeah. much mm-hmm. more than a yeah. month or two. Right. So. so, yeah, we'll be backing out and stuff. And we got a question what do we have for a dinghy? We could actually take the camera and peek right down over the edge here. So it's a uh, Achilles. Yeah, you're, you're the microphone there, so you keep talking. Uh, so he's going to the back of the boat. He hopefully will not throw you overboard. Yeah, don't drop the iPhone. But it's an inflatable rib with an aluminum uh, hull uh, by Achilles. It is, I think, 10 feet, 10.4, something like that. And we have a uh, Yamaha 9.9 outboard engine. Uh, And we just before the pandemic started, we upgraded it to an electric start, which has been awesome because now I can start it without having to pull the little ripcord thingy. And we had a question from Ben about where's Kiki. Let's look at her. Always Captain Underfoot trying to trip us. So the dinghy's been okay. Ours is a very basic one. I think if we 
or next one that comes due to uh, replace this one, we'll be looking for something more comfortable. Uh, yeah, I with find, a, a seat instead of just sitting on the sides. Yeah, I don't like sitting on the, the tube and steering because, you know, for a short trip, that's fine. But we love going down some of these side tributaries here in the St. John's, the places we explore. And, you know, I find after about being in this dinghy for five or ten minutes, I'm done with it. It is yeah, so uncomfortable. Yeah, back starts to hurt. It's, yeah, so we, 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 there are, you know, we could get one with a folding down console and an actual seat and a steering wheel instead of the, the tiller. So mm -hmm. so someday we will we will upgrade our dinghy because, we you know, it's it's your get-around car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to be able to be more comfortable for getting out and exploring on um, right now, it's just and, like a functional thing. Yeah, and we potentially might even just upgrade this one. There are ways to put add the seat yeah. and convert everything yeah, here and stuff. Been, so we've been happy yeah. with it, but we haven't really don't have any experience with any other dinghies yeah, to compare so. it to. So. Oh, okay, we got a question about are mosquitoes less of an issue if you stay towards the middle of the river? What what is a mosquito? The <laughs> national bird of Florida. We have a couple of mosquitoes at which anchorage was it? Is it pontoon? Oh uh, yeah, Hantun, we had to come inside. Um, no, 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 it was Emanuel Bend we had Oh, Emanuel Bend, yeah. The first Anchorage we went to, yeah. we had a couple of mosquitoes, and it ended our hot tub time. We do have now a hot tub yes. on board. Um, <laughs> uh, it did end our, our uh, hot tub time that evening and came in early, but we have not had any mosquitoes, worse of wood, yeah. knock on that. Not yeah, the, the the mosquito. I mean, midges and mosquitoes and just bugs in general can happen at any time, any place in Florida. A lot depends on when they hatch. Where's the wind? Um, you know, sometimes like you know, we we've anchored intentionally like out on Lake George when it's like a calm night because if you're out on the lake, there's a little bit more breeze, keeps the mosquitoes away. But other times, if you're anchored out on the lake and you got your light on, you're uh, what attracts the midges, and you wake up and you're covered with bugs yes. of a different kind. Yes. So midges are these water insects that hatch from the water and if you look back at our time in Sanford two years ago that was a major issue there was a major bloom that year that just had us constantly covered in them uh, we were just starting to get a small cropping of them when we left Sanford last week so I'm glad we're not because they're not as much of an issue on the river itself um, but it can be when you're in a lake that you have more standing water where the, the eggs can be so yeah it's it's just you know seal up when you have to <laughs> actually we also have a, a thermocell so we should should use that if... yeah this anchorage here we haven't had any problem with bugs Back yeah, on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh willy wonka wants to know how effective is our new battery and charging system it's new it's three yeah, it's years three old years now old. Yeah. <laughs> so it's effective it's still very there. effective so yeah, we, we got solar panels. this is this roof over us here is all solar panels yeah, so... i'll show you to give you a quick solar tour that's all panels. We did. We replaced the bimini with solar panels, and that is our roof for the back half of the um, flybridge. And so, and there's the hot tub over there. Yes. Um, so we have uh, this trip. We left on Tuesday, so we're going on night six at anchor. We have only run our generator just under three hours total uh, today. We haven't run it at all. Uh, we've been entirely solar based yeah. and off the lithium. We have 300 amp hours of lithium batteries at 24 volts. Um, so that's 600 amp hours if you're calculating at 12 volt. And uh, we do have a very energy hungry boat. Well, the boat itself isn't, but we have four refrigerator freezer items. So I am sitting on our Dometic CFX 100, which is currently wired into 110, but we will be able to put it on 24 yep. volts. And eventually we'll replace the um, the main fridge, which is a just an apartment residential fridge downstairs, replace that with a 24 volt fridge too. And once we have both of those running off 24 volt, we'll be able to turn the inverter off overnight and that will dramatically to dial back our power usage and we'll so be- We also have an ice maker and we have a beer fridge up yeah, here. So, so those are very- <laughs> They're, they're thinking, we could turn off the ice maker in the beer fridge if we wanted to be energy conservation. Yeah. Um, but when we don't need to run the air conditioners at all, it, we can get through the day pretty just fine, be able to work on the computers yeah. and charge things up. And watch then the big screen at watch, night. Yeah, we, yeah. Watch, we have a 49-inch television downstairs. So we watch up out of the floor. So we watch yeah. that, and we do pretty well off our energy system and not running at much of a deficit and maybe just need to make yeah. it up for about an hour Every, every other, other day. day and it mostly if, if we like you know decide to, to do bake you know you know 
broil something or use, do something in the oven that is, in the convection oven that'll use a lot or of power the, yeah. or the induction stove top yeah. um other than that i mean the air conditioner uh, we're supposed to get a bit of a heat wave starting tuesday i think so we'll yeah. probably need to run yeah. the air conditioner some in the afternoon so we'll be running the generator yeah. for that yeah. we could technically run the air conditioner we could actually even run two air conditioners of the three on board two at a time off of the batteries but that'll be going way faster mm -hmm. than the solar is replenishing it yeah. so we might as well run the generator while the air conditioners are running now back to the kitty topic, uh, Frank, Frank Franklin points out a rope over the side can help with tacking aboard. And he actually, we got into a habit for a while after that first scare of the alligator of leaving a, a towel dangling over the side. A towel and a rope. The problem with that, especially if you're in a lot of icky water, which the ICW can be and so can the St. John's, is... That's thing it's very is, gross. <laughs> it is so freaking gross when you take it out and then you're doing freshwater rinse downs on it. and uh, Because Kiki just doesn't go overboard and she doesn't really explore much anymore since that incident uh, we got out of the habit of putting that out we did for a while especially after that for about a long while we would put something overboard so that she could get on climb back on board herself mm -hmm. we'll see you soon ben uh, yep see you soon great to see you pop in here um let's see catch up you have, have you been in heavy seas in our boat um, sometimes when other boats go by and they don't slow down and they're being rude and they wake you, those are the heaviest seas we've been in. Uh, there was one, it was, uh, what is the St. Andrew's Sound, um, coming into Jekyll Island. Yes. Um, that one, if you hit it at, with the tide and the winds are opposing, you can get some eight, I think we had like seven to eight foot seas yeah. when we're going through there. And it, it was, it, it was, uh, it was it exciting, was, but it was not overly exciting but we have not been in open the only open water that we've done uh was when we did the passage from naples florida down to the keys so and we were actually out of sight of land in any direction for about 15 minutes so it was very exciting <laughs> um and yeah that was about eight hours of and, open water and we we, climbed, and, but, we but, weathered it was it was smooth and glassy it was glassy time. we actually stopped in the middle of, and just went for a swim because it was like amazing it's so beautiful out there the, the bay liner we hear is is able to handle more than you can um <laughs> i don't want to ever experience that if i don't have to that's not what we're about we're yeah. not about the open seas well of course if we go to the bahamas we're gonna to have to deal with, with yeah, it you, some. you try to time it with weather windows and stuff and, and um uh, when we do actually get back on the loop there'll be like a little ocean passage up in new jersey and as well when we get to mobile alabama getting back to florida coming across the gulf of mexico um but we'll, we'll always time it with the weather, try to minimize the chances of having to deal with heavy seas. Because this <laughs> boat just is not a, a blue water cruiser. No, it doesn't have stabilizers. And we're not blue water cruisers. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we, 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 I love cruising rivers. And, you know, you do, you know, you, you always need to be prepared for, for wake. wake. And, you know, uh, some people are very inconsiderate or just don't even think it through that how much wake they're putting out. Um, we actually see some people who slow down their boat to medium speed to pass and a boat worst. in medium speed puts out a big way because it's kind of pushing a wall of water so they think they're being nice and they're actually making things worse than if they had just zoomed by mm -hmm. um so yeah i don't know the uh, boaters should learn about how their wake affects other people um that's our that's our biggest heavy seas we've been in is is being waked i guess but, being waked. Yeah, we've had some happens. pretty bad wakings before <laughs> yep and Let's see. Who or what is escapers? Jayberg asks. Um, so escapers is X escapers. It's a um, club within a club of the escapees. So the escapees RV club was founded in the late seventies as a community and social network and educational source and collaboration of resources for full-time RVers. And we always avoided it because we always assumed it was the old people's or retired RVers club. And we finally went to our first uh, escapees rally called the Escapade in 2014. And we had the good fortune of meeting Travis and Mel, who uh, Travis is the grandson of the founders of the escapees club. And we had pitched them. They had this concept called birds of a feather. They're subgroups. We said, you really need one for working aged RVers. Yes. He says, no, we need we, more we need, than we, that. We need a whole new everything. And so we were involved. We helped. We basically devoted a whole bunch of time working with Travis and Mel to create the Escapers, which is 
you know, it's a, a second door into the escapees club for targeting the younger working, working on the road RVers. There's a very blurry line between what's an escaper and an escapee, but it's boomed. It's turned into this amazing community There's of like 12, 000, older generation. Yeah. 12,000 members now. And it's basically <laughs> people with more active lifestyle, people who might be like hiking and bike and oh, mountain biking yeah. and, um, or working remotely, maybe families <laughs> on the roads. And they have, we went to the, the annual bash. They, yeah, the oh yeah, it was crazy. We it was right. It was our last big hurrah before the pandemic hit, and oh my god, it was like some of the most fun we've had in our it was like fifteen for, years. In the so road, we so. brought to them a concept because <laughs> we had been hosting a lot of RV meetups over the years when we found people on the road that we wanted to hang out with. They'd be weeks, months long, in cool locations. We just get a campground, and say, "Hey, come get your reservation. Yep. Come join us for a month." Uh, we used to host a. a Camp at Burning Man for, Our nomads. for nomads, Camp Nomadia. Camp Nomadia. So we took all of these ideas that we had incorporated for the social side of our of grouping. We didn't like going to rallies because it was a week of nonstop seminars and events. And if you're working remotely, that's taking time off of work. And it's like, no, a convergence needs to be... A whole bunch of cool people hanging out in a cool place with time to work and time to play. get your party on. And... It, this like, so so now that now it's actually be, you know it's starting to happen like the escapers are have event after event after event that you, you know is, assuming everything goes as planned is starting up again this summer but they they basically took an entire year off because of the pandemic but it's you know this this tribe of people who are just kind of getting together and you know they you'll see the same faces over and over again but you don't you're not tied to any agenda you know, right. some people go to just one event some people go to they plan their entire year around staying at yep. the events. We, we always imagine a kind of a roaming convergence where oh, you have yeah. a neighborhood that moves with you. And that's kind of what they've been able to do. And it offers a whole bunch more. They've got a job board for helping people find jobs on the road. Uh, a lot of resources. They've incorporated more it's, on mobile internet, more working remotely, more families on the road. It's just such a great community. And so, yeah, we're, we're hugely proud to have been part of giving birth to that. That is, yeah. And, um... Yeah, being out on the boat most of the past four years, we kind of, it's been growing, and it's great to see it growing without us after we launched it, but it's also been kind of like, God, I'm you know, missing out oh on my. some of that fun stuff, because the, the equivalent does not quite exist in the boating world quite yet, anyway. Not really, not that we know of, anyway. Yes. Um, and yeah, but anyway, it's it's great. Uh, we're caught up on, on questions. Right. I see Ron is here on hey. SD. Hey, guys. If, uh, if you caught them, they were in the uh, the biking video helping us. Mm -hmm. They actually came out and fixed a flat for us on our new electric yeah, there bikes. We are. And we got to spend an afternoon He's biking with our him. bike hero. And, I, and Ron, you'll be proud that you know I learned from you and I was able to. She got another flat. She seems to get the flats i don't know steve but... and i are privileged in that we get flats <laughs> and so I, I i learned from you and i was able to put your lessons to work and patched her flat no problem and our bikes have been so much fun and we got to get right get together with you guys and ride sometime again you're in new hampshire they yeah they, they, they i keep, know they keep poking us to go up there. in new hampshire i be, be maybe maybe we'll see i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, All right. Yeah, I think we're caught up. We we actually didn't light up the grill. We we're gonna. Oh, that's right. We're gonna start. We're gonna grill some. We got some chicken preseason from Aldi's that we're gonna grill tonight. And I put together a little veggie pack with some Brussels nice. sprouts and carrots and spinach. And that's our grilling. We do a lot of grilling aboard the boat when uh, we're at anchor to save the power usage. And, and just because it's nice to hang out here up on the top deck with um, you know these views. I mean, you sit up here, and as long as it's not too hot or too windy. You just watch animals go by, and it's Some just of them are party animals. Yes. Oh, yeah, so... Our last anchorage <laughs> we stopped at, which was on... It's just north of Aster. South of Aster. South of Aster. It was an island called Shell Island, and we tucked in, and we're like, wow, this is great. We've never been to this anchorage before. It's a, basically a little deserted island with a beach and a, um, a sign saying, this is Shell Island. It's, you know, dedicated to veterans. Please keep it clean. And um, they got a picnic table and a bunch of chairs, and somebody built a little outhouse on the island. And we're like, we, we went explored it. We did a little oh, paddle yeah, boarding so around. So many people had left used like, toilet tissue. Oh yeah, because dirty. I, I guess people go there in their houseboats, and well, there's you know they just they poop in the woods. Uh, yeah, or they yeah they just I don't know. So we're like we started calling it poop island instead of shell island because there's just little bits of toilet paper everywhere all over the island. Dirty. 
very dirty, dirty toilet, toilet paper. I was, not, I was tempted to clean it up, but no. Yeah, it, it would have been multiple trash bags, but it was still, the island was pretty, as long as you didn't walk through the woods. And it was a small island, and we're like, we have this whole place for ourselves, and we're just there. And then a boat, a houseboat cruises by, circles once, circles twice, and they're cranking up um, modern country karaoke, but singing it with very vile lyric language, and it's basically a, 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 a bunch of friends frat party thing going by and that we were clearly in their spot you know they wanted the spot where we were anchored right on this little beach by this island they end up tying up on the other side of the island and then it's like okay oh okay i guess they're kind of out of earshot um they turn the music down then another houseboat ties up just over yonder and then another houseboat and they're like they push you now they basically dock uh, they tie up they beach on the island 25 feet away from us if the wind had changed directions our, we would have smashed, we would have smashed we into them we're like that. and they're like don't worry we, we just want to make sure the kids can get onto the beach here at the island and we're like houseboats okay we picked up the anchor and we went all the way to the other end of the anchorage yeah you, you are viewers will know it's like you find the amazing boondocking spot and then people come and even if there's like miles and miles of open desert they park next to you and then crank was, up their music. It, it, was, like, it, was, it was better for us because you know, we, we've been uh, enjoying the hot tub at night. Yeah. and uh, We, we like wanted to be out of eyesight of the kids. So, yes, yeah. yes. And that gave them more, more room for space. <laughs> yeah, so we moved. It was friendly. It was like, okay, you know, we'll give yeah, you the beach. But we now forever will call Shell Island Party Coop Island. Um, oh, yeah, particularly because the frat boys turned up the music around oh, 11 o'clock okay. until 3 o'clock. 3 a.m. Oh, cranked out the karaoke. That's what that means. <laughs> hey, well, you know, they didn't invite us over, but maybe. I didn't want to be invited over. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, oh, we got a few quick little questions popped up. Um, is Does your boat have thrusters? Yes, we have a bow thruster, but not a stern thruster. It is very dual handy. Engines, so. And, and uh, how are your alligator relationships? Apparently, they're not as dangerous as I thought. Um, I've yeah. never kissed one. It's... We, we have, I mean, they're, they're around all the time and we paddleboard with, if I see big ones swimming around, I'm not going to get on my paddleboard, but you know. I have paddleboarded near, but it, yeah, don't go too close. I mean, it's just. Yeah, yeah, don't disturb them. I mean, people here on the St. John's River, the alligators are all over and people swim. They let their kids swim in the water and. Particularly kids they don't like, I guess. Just, you swim over there. Uh, maybe, like, yeah. but. You know, we don't hear about alligator attacks. Uh, the, the alligators are well fed here. There's plenty of food sources for them. Yeah. We hear about people attacking alligators. Yes. It's, now, we do have thing. an issue with them at the marina. They come into the marina, and at some point, they start just snagging snacks off the dock. So people walking their dogs or cats. Uh, so we never, never let Kiki walk the docks at the marina. Um, so that has been an issue from time to time. Um, they do bring in um, animal services to remove alligators once they get to be a certain size from the marina. Yep. Um, but other than that, we have not heard of many issues with alligator attacks. So I personally think they are just absolutely gorgeous. Oh. I love watching them. Um, Our friend Sean said he's seen at this very anchorage a blue alligator. So we're hoping to see a blue alligator. I don't know if that's depressed or colored blue, but either way, I want to talk to this one. So how are your alligator relationships? So, <laughs> yeah, so, so far we've not had an issue with them, yep. but we treat them with respect. Yep. So. Now we have a good question here from uh, Sofak of what carrier are you using the live stream right now? We'll do a quick internet thing just because it's kind of geeky cool. There's marginal internet here because we're in the middle of nowhere on the river. Uh, so I'm combining... Um, AT&T, but I'm band locking to force it onto band five because that was the best upload. And then um, but bonding that with a Calyx Sprint SIM that is being forced to roam onto T-Mobiles because that's got the best upload. So I'm using a lot of the tricks in the book that we, you know, the book the we book wrote. wrote. <laughs> yeah. So so the stuff we just teach people how to do at the Mobile Internet Resource Center to get a reliable upstream connection to do a broadcast in the middle of nowhere. This is the sort of stuff we help people do. So go over to our workspace, mobileinternetinfo.com, if you want to learn more about all that cool stuff. And we also stuff. have a YouTube <laughs> channel dedicated to mobile internet. Yeah. Yes. the mobile internet resource center where we are tracking this stuff nonstop. <laughs> yes and then i think we'll wrap up with this question is what are we drinking tonight because it's time for a refill yes this is a, a tapino <laughs> grigio uh that we got at aldi's it is nothing i think it's a five dollar bottle of wine nothing <laughs> special i picked it this evening because of the bicycle and our new electric bikes yes so and 
puts it in the cup. Oops, here. That's why we get this question. And oh, we do have to answer this here. Here's a Cherie, your hair looks beautiful. It's glowing in the sunlight and very pretty. And we both look great. We've been going to the gym on our boat every day. We yeah. have. Yes. Uh, yes, we've, we've been getting, um, well, the electric bikes, we've been doing a lot of biking. And not yeah. using the electric. The point yes. of an electric bike is that you don't feel intimidated by going on a long bike ride because you can always get back if you get over. We over-tired. have also been loving the new Apple Fitness stuff that integrates in with the their watches. <laughs> we do probably one or two of their sessions, yoga, hits, um, hits yeah. is uh, high interval training. Yeah. Um I'm loving the dance. I'm doing the dance one. Yeah, so so um, we just pop up the big screen in the salon, and uh, and every morning we do a pick a workout and do it together. So it's it's been good because on the boat, particularly on the river, there's not always a place to get ashore to go for a walk, which we would normally walk three or four miles a day. So it's very nice. We use the paddle board. You know, it went for a good thirty minute paddle this morning, and it's it's great to get out on the paddle board and stuff. But sometimes there's wind or current. So we also, having... have, a, we also have an exercise bike yes. on the boat. So <laughs> when we're doing extended anchorages, we have another cardio option. We do try to keep what we're definitely not going to be confused with the fit rv or the fit boaters we are not fitness enthusiasts we are obviously not um, <laughs> fitness models um but we do try to keep active we try to counterbalance our sedentary nature of being geeks and it's sitting in front of computers too much <laughs> yes so we do try to counterbalance it um and also for uh, speaking of hair our hairstylist is uh, sabina you see her in the chat room uh, she is a professional hairstylist, so she is. It's been wonderful having our own hairstylist right in Stanford. Who, I don't know. She, it's, it's a little weird because, like, she's like, I saw you on the live, and I really, your hair's a mess. I need to do something about it. I was like, oh, okay. I'm <laughs> coming in. Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh uh, no, it's awesome because they're fellow RVers, so we can do haircuts on the beach. So it's been great. We've not had to do pandemic hair because we have Sabina, and when you have a close friend that you trust. It's been and, good. Yep, and we 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 did, did haircuts during the middle of the pandemic on the beach with the wind in our face and everybody masked and stuff, so we felt safe because we were both RVing at, at the beach. So it's great. Mm-hmm. <sighs> How's the sun setting behind us? It is. It's oh, gorgeous. it's about to hit the trees. Oh, pretty. Yeah. There's, there's Kiki. Yeah, she's been very active. She Kiki, come on, you got fan. Look, she's come on. Look, oh. Share with them what's up with Kiki. Yeah, I guess we could. Kiki, do you mind sharing your medical history here? So, no, here, here, so I'll show you guys a little bit of the sunrise, sunset going on. Right. Since there was a lot of talk of cats and stuff, we'll just share that Kiki's so, got diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, and um, which means that very soon, when we get as soon as we get back from this cruise, she's going to get injected with radiation and gl- will glow in the dark for a couple days. So, uh, yeah, we got her caught up on her annuals, and she did come back with hyperthyroidism. Thankfully. Looks like we caught it very early. Uh, well, we hope so. Um, our friend Nina of Wheeling It, her cats went through it a couple years ago, a few years ago, and we were able <laughs> to go back to all of her old blog posts, and we did a nice video chat with her. They now live in France. Um, got a lot of advice, and we did decide to go forward with the radiation iodine one thirty one treatment. And we found a clinic here in Florida that does the custom doses. And so, they had an opening very soon, so we don't so, have to wait. So and... we we will be. I think that's June eighth is that appointment. So we will make sure we're back in time. We've booked a campground nearby. We'll be sending our friend Ben, who's, yep. who's over there, um, and. Uh, and yeah, hopefully that's supposed to be a cure. Yeah, it's supposed to be a very safe treatment, but she will be radioactive for a few weeks. Yes. And we have to like store her litter for a while because it'll have be to store for, for 90 eight, days. 80 80 days, 80 or days. Or like that, so. Yeah. So, so, so this treatment, which is actually fairly, is only developed in the eighties and nineties. It's, it, it you, 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 otherwise you'd be on very heavy drugs for the rest of her life. Um, but this treatment is apparently a cure. And once they're past it, they're back to normal. So um, you know, we love our cat. We'll do anything for her. And I guess, you know, if she's radioactive, then we can use a Geiger counter to find her and we won't have to worry about tracking her anymore. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, we've talked about gators. Um, so here now, yes, if you rewind, we talked about gators and stuff. And yes, we do see gators. We had one swimming right off the boat just a, a few minutes yes. ago, actually. And some anatees here, too. Yes, and hopefully... There's supposed to be a blue gator. I don't know how. I don't know if that means it's depressed, mm-hmm. or if it's actually blue. We will find, and we'll find the dolphins. Hopefully, in the next few days, we'll see dolphins. Yes. So we should be out here uh, probably about another two weeks before we return to Sanford to get ready to take Kiki to her radiation <laughs> uh, treatment. Um, 
and I will be doing that by van. And then uh, we'll probably do her recovery because she's got about two weeks where she has to be not around people, including us. That's going to be hard. Yeah, um, she can't sleep on our heads for two weeks. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, so we'll then look to see what the world looks like come July and start planning probably some van trips while we store the boat in Sanford. But yeah, we're looking forward. We're going to probably go as far north as Jacksonville on this trip. Um, oh, until we see a dolphin. Until we got to keep see a going, dolphin, you know? which It might, might be, uh, uh, um, we might get all the way to New Hampshire if we don't see dolphins until then. I don't know, Ron. Have you seen any uh, dolphins up there? <laughs> okay, before I switch to the, the outro video, I guess I'll give... I guess my mom says she also gets her hair cut. So my mom lives over in Melbourne. A big reason why we came back to Sanford is only an hour and a half from mom. So she books her hair appointments with Sabina as well. So give her give, give another sunset view. Another sunset view, and then it'll trigger the outro video. Look at this. There's not a lot of clouds, otherwise we'd be getting really great colors here tonight, I'm sure. And yeah, Cherie's hair does glow in the sun. <laughs> Look at this. Let's line it up again. There it goes. It glows. Oh, she's hiding. <laughs> and the hot tub, which is our best little Thanksgiving present to ourselves ever. Well, from your parents, yes. not to ourselves. Well, yes. But, well, <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> the hot tub is part of their Christmas gift to us. It has been wonderful to have an inflatable hot tub up here. There's the sunset. And thank it's you. A it's a rough life. It is sometimes. Clearly, it's a rough life. She has it rough. Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this uh, um, afternoon, evening, sunset We're hangout. We're going to go grill some dinner, and then that hot tub's calling my name. Absolutely. Take care. Good night. Cherie, what are you questing for? This is Dolphin Quest, underway! Thank you.